in a communication system, an encoder maps your message to a code word that can be sent through the channel, and the decoder takes the code word and converts it back to the message. Okay. Or if you're looking at a security system or something like an online purchase system, uh, you may have a encryptor and a decryptor. Okay. And what this does is that, you know, for example, for example, you may, um, right, when you're purchasing something online, right, you may insert your credit card number. Right, so your credit card number is encrypted, right, sent to the other side, let's say a bank or some you know, financial institute, and they will decrypt the, decrypt the message back to your credit card number. Right? So this encryption and decryption operation is also an example of a system and an inverse system. OK. Now, when is a system non-invertible? Okay, when is a system non-invertible? So we say that a system is invertible if distinct inputs lead to distinct outputs. That is because when you, in this case, when you are given the output, you know specifically what is the input. Okay. So when is a system non-invertible? A system is non-invertible when you have multiple inputs that lead to a common output. Okay? So in that case, when you are given the output, you don't really know which input caused this output. Okay? So a trivial example is when the output is a constant. So for example, when you have a system that produces zero, no matter what the input is, then this system is not invertible, OK? Or if you have a system where the output is equal to the square of the input, then this is also not invertible, because you know, plus and minus the same value will lead to the same output. Okay. Right. So we know what it means for a system to be memoryless, and now what it means for a system to be invertible. Okay. So the next concept is causality. Okay. Now, what does it mean for a system to be causal? So we say a system is causal if the output at any given time depends only on the input at the present and past times. Okay. So a system is causal if its output at any given time depends only on the present and past times. OK? So this system, right, at the output at any time depends only on what has already occurred before at the input. OK? So this system is sometimes said to be non-anticipative. Okay? It's not able to you know, anticipate the future. Okay. So you can see that there's, uh, it, it's, uh, it, it, you can see by the definition that you know, a memoryless system is obviously a causal system, right? Because a memoryless system depends only on present input. Okay? So an example of this is a memoryless 
system. Okay. Now, another example is the accumulator. Because a, an accumulator accumulates all of the input that has occurred on and before the current time. Okay. So the accumulator here, even though it is not memoryless, uh, it is still causal, right? Because it depends only on the input at the present and past times. All right. Now, you know, other examples that we looked at before, right, for example, this uh, RC circuit example here, and also this, uh, you know, moving vehicle example here, right, we can see that in both of these cases, the output, the voltage across C, and also the force imposed on this uh, I'm sorry, the, the resulting velocity of this vehicle are both, you know, causal with respect to the input, okay? So most real-time systems are, in fact, causal, right? Because your output would not, you know, depend on the future, but is only a consequence of the past, okay? All right, so an accumulator for examples uh, in 1.8 and 1.9, okay? Now here we have two obvious counter, counter examples. So in this example here, you can see that the output at time n depends on the input at time n plus one. So this is a future input. So therefore this system is not causal, okay? So similarly here in continuous time, the output at time t depends on the input at time t plus one, which is also a future input. So it is not causal, okay? Now causality, right, often you know, holds when we're looking at real-time systems, okay? But sometimes, like we mentioned before, you know, a signal may not be respect to time, but instead, of, instead uh, is respect to other independent variables such as space or frequency, okay? So if you're looking at signals that are not with respect to time, then there is no uh, there's no guarantee, right? It's not necessary for the system to be causal, okay? So causality may not be necessary if the independent variable is not time, okay? And an example of this is image processing, right? So your image is typically a signal with respect to the spatial variable, okay? Now, causality also does not need to hold if you're looking at, uh, if you're performing post-processing on a, on a time domain signal, right? So even though this signal is with respect to time, but you have recorded it and then processed it, uh, uh, processed it later, okay? So in that case, you also do not need to be causal, okay? So processing recorded data and an example of this is uh, like, you know, performing a st stock market analysis. Right? For example, if you just want to know the general trend of the stock market, you may take a moving average of the, you know, values at, at, a, at you know, certain windows of time, okay? So for example, you can take a non-causal averaging, right, if you're not processing the signal in real time, but instead you have already collected the stock market data, and then you want to do, do some post-study on this, 
then you can perform some non-causal averaging where you get the output yn equal to, let's say, an average of the input over some time window. Uh, sorry. Okay. So since uh, you already have all the stock market data on your hands, right, you can certainly take a non-causal averaging where you average not only over the signal at the present time, but also at the signal you know, before, uh, before and after the current time. Okay. Now here we have two examples. All right. So in this first example, we have y of n equal to x of minus n. Okay. So is this signal causal or non-causal? Okay. Is this signal causal or non-causal? Okay. Uh, let's uh, show your hands. Uh, show your hands if you think this is causal. All right. All right, thank you. So show your hands if you think it's non-causal. Okay. So why do you think it's non-causal? 